I am creating things that in some way want to slip in between the cracks of knowledge, the cracks of certainty. If they manage to do that and inspire other people to go and search for themselves to have moral or ethical or social, religious or economic uh, doubts in themselves, then that's good. Because whether the authority is spiritual or whether it's economic or political, I know that I'm fundamentally opposed to it. For me, that makes sense. And as long as people live, and as long as they create these kind of social hierarchies and so on, people like me will continue to exploit the cracks between them. And we will continue to show other possibilities. How long is the microphone? Okay. It's long. This is why people like Jeff Coons and they came in here for like an army of them. So they can sit around talking shit while they work. What will happen here today is basically um, these uh, long time friends of mine and uh, they, they will help bury me. Um, and then as soon as I disappear underneath the soil, I'll re-emerge again, uh, re again, kind of struggling against the weight of the soil. At the moment the setup just concerns um, the grave, of course, which is over there, and then uh, we've built some scaffolding just to give the camera some height, um, so that it can record the process uh, as unobtrusively as possible. It'll basically be one static shot. It was interesting for me also to say that it shouldn't be some disembodied thing, that the people who bury me are, are people who know, who I've had a long time connection with, such as my wife and Sorrel and oh, the whole bunch of them. <laughs> you burnt a little bit. Did, didn't anybody put in some sunblock? <laughs> Um, my body will be covered in gold leaf, which basically refers to two things. On the one hand, it's uh, Joseph Boys, um, and on the other hand, of course, it's, it's the, the reality of gold mining in South Africa, how it gave rise to a city called Johannesburg, which just came from absolutely nowhere. No, he's going to be gold leaf. Not enough metal to protect. It's like a golden honey. For me, on a, on a level, the work is very much about um, the history of, of uh, the world in terms of mineral energy, um, yeah, you know, power of gold and diamonds and, and mining. I mean, it goes much further than that because, of course, uh, there's also the Inca burials, the, yeah, the kind of spiritual level to the whole thing, which for me is actually more important than the rest. I basically coupled those ideas with uh, Kashua Shiraga's in initial works, which he did, I think, in 1956, called Challenging Mud. And uh, in that work, he literally just created a large pile of mud and um, physically lay in it, challenging it. So this image to me was very interesting and also the, phys the physical nature of the work. Art isn't just polite conversations and uh, clean gallery walls and so on, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in the real world of making work and I suspect this is a good exercise for it because um, 
when we started it was a very simple idea uh, just have a grave somewhere and then um, you know get buried in it uh, but of course the practicalities of it is that we've had to postpone for two weekends because uh, because of the weather and then when you eventually arrive here the hole is full of water so everybody's got to clean it up and uh, it's mid-afternoon so people are thirsty and soon enough you know the whole thing starts resembling a picnic I read yesterday about the Gutai group in, in Japan and um, when they started in the 50s, Japan had just come out of a, a massive defeat in the World War and um, basically the whole of Japanese culture was um, open. So a lot of cultural practitioners like Kasua Shiraga uh, and, a, and a host of other ones uh, found that they had room to experiment, that they had room to kind of move around, um, to redefine what cultural expression means in Japan at that stage. And when I think about um, the 90s in South Africa, the mid-90s, then I feel more or less the same way about it. I look at a lot of those artists um, who've come from that period, uh, and I think that they had a lot of room to move around. They could do experimental works, the kind of works that are context-specific in some way, but also um, fairly cutting edge in terms of the use of technology, uh, conceptual approaches to art and so on. So for me, that basically forms the staple of um, my ideas when it comes to the role of art. In 1994 had come and gone, uh, South Africa was in the process of becoming a, a complete democracy. Um, but a lot of artists during that time produced fairly explosive uh, works. And some of these artists became very famous later on. Once again, somebody like William Kentridge or Kendall Gears, Candice Brights and so on. And I was exposed to their works as well um, on a fairly regular basis. So I think what I took from all those works is, is a fairly critical attitude towards um, societal structure, basically anti-authoritarian kind of tendencies inherent in the work. And the fact that often these works were experimental, more so than I would say today's artistic practice in South Africa is. So what are you saying? You want to I was, I was on the you want to throw more on you now? You're getting out. I no, I think I can get out because yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've seen you do some weird shit, Johan, but this is... This is quite interesting, you should try it. It's fucking scary. You should try it yourself one day. Well, you know, the advantage is all of us will one day try this ourselves for you. The advantage, the advantage. Yeah, so you'll get this experience for yourself.